Well, here, <laughs> here we are at the airfield. Um, well, I, I think it's the airfield. Well, I know it's the airfield, really, but have a look around. That's what we're dealing with today. Absolutely no visibility whatsoever. And there's a whole lot of damp in the air. But bearing in mind that we've had <laughs> all that heavy rain, and then we had those strong winds. We did have two very nice days, but this is what we've got now. So it looks like um, I'm going to be back to showing you one of the old videos. I have to say, I am running out of my stock film. Are you there? Yep, round two. It started okay, then I lost it, and then I had a series of those clicks again. All oh, right. Do you want me to go out? Are you going to stay down there until I go? Yep, I'll wait here for you. thousand foot to the foot front <laughs> I'm just uh, stooging over the airfield a lot of the runway is in shade so I can't quite work out if John's got to the top of the strip I'm looking for him on the ground and there he is. I was aware of the fact that that EPIS in one of those videos was sort of dreadfully lacking. Uh, I think I've shown you that it, the subsequent flight was okay, but I thought I'd just give it another test now.
Okay, trim pans off. Ever so slight tendency to want to go to the left. But not too bad. Very, very glary when you're looking into the sun. my tail and I'll show you what I mean from that back camera anyway. Presumably the front camera lit up quite nicely. I will make it a little bit easier and come out of the sun. shut the cameras down uh, like so many other people seem to do this week I'd like to give a shout out to Adam whose YouTube channel goes under the name of private pilot vlogs flying low-level BFR in the UK on a summer's afternoon man this is what it's all about Adam flies an interesting variety of people to various destinations within the UK and the near continent. Links to his channel uh, are in the description below and on the end page. And you're back with me, uh, approaching the overhead, uh, nearly 3,000 feet. I'm going to just bring the car of heat out. And I'm just going to do a little bit of slow flying. I did meet up with John briefly. Uh, having got on his tail, he just opened up and left me standing there. Quite a bit of right rudder. As I sat there, I was thinking what a beautiful late afternoon flight and how lucky I was to be able to do that. We hadn't gone anywhere apart from getting into the air and that is the main thing. I say we, that's the aircraft and myself, but maybe you as well if you see these videos as ride-alongs. The air was still and we seemed to just be hanging in space. I was looking at the instruments and everything was fine. The cylinder head temperature probe was working well. The carb heat sensor was also performing as it should have done. I looked at the steady fuel gauge and thought about that flight with Rob and how I kicked myself that I hadn't filmed the subsequent work that John and I did on rectifying the problem. That would have been a really good one to share with everybody.
Just film that so that John could see it. Right. Do you know, it's funny you should say that, but I had exactly the same trouble with the fuel gauge on my boat. Yeah. I was doing exactly the same thing as that one's doing. And was that an earth problem? or it, I think it was, actually, yeah. We, yeah. Had, we had it all out, cleaned it all up. Um, and uh, re reattach the earth, and after that we didn't have a problem. All right. But that was exactly the same as what mine was doing. Yeah. Well, I sat in the cockpit and we took the panel to pieces to make sure that the connections were um, secure onto the back of the instrument, and they were. So then working that one forward, John removed this plate. Now. I don't really want to remove the plate to show you because it's all back in place and underneath this there's a, a rubber ceiling cap but by taking this off and the rubber ceiling cap we were able to access the uh, fuel sender now I think the easiest thing for me to do is to try and go back to my teaching days and create some sort of uh, visual aid for you to to see that. This is a sectional drawing through the tank itself. The sender is screwed into the top of the tank with an arm coming down from it onto a cork float. As the level of fuel increases so the float raises and the arm lifts. As it moves, the mechanism slides an arm along a rheostat. We did think that we would probably have to buy a whole new unit, but at about £250 plus VAT, uh, that wasn't a very nice thought. But then suddenly John had a bit of a eureka moment. By pushing the contacts of the slider against the rheostat and bending them back in place, it suddenly started working. So it turned out in the end to be quite a simple fix, really. Island traffic of Alpha Yankee Echo Hotel overhead at 3000.
I just need leaves to uh, open the door, put it all away. And of course, because the spats are off, wash the underside, which is bound to be very, very muddy. Well, if it was a video, and you did get to the end, well done. Uh, please leave me a comment, like it, um, subscribe if you haven't, and hit the notification bell. I know it's a bit ridiculous for me, because I try and do one every, well, I have succeeded in doing one every single week at 7.30 in the morning, but I think by the sound of it, it does help the uh, YouTube analytics if you do. But for those people that have been subscribing for some time and regularly commenting, I do appreciate it. Uh, and thank you very much.